hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to engrave a tile to make ourselves a trivet. Well, as you know, I've been playing around with Xtools D1 Pro 20 watt laser engraver and I wanted to try to engrave some ceramic tiles. So what we're going to do first is engrave the tile and then we're going to add a little bit of woodworking to it. So in order to engrave the tile, you can't just engrave on the ceramic. You will damage the tile. So what we need is a carrier agent and for that, a little bit of white spray paint will do the trick perfectly. So I have a six by six tile and I've given it a really good cleaning to get any residue or any dust off of it. So what I'm going to use to coat this is just some simple Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover. This is gloss white. Um, this is what I have heard works best for this sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is take this outside and I'm going to paint the entire top surface of this tile, making sure to get good even coverage and then I'm going to let it dry. Well, the paint is dry on the tile. I have focused my laser by using my drop down focusing arm. I'm just going to click it to the home position to make sure that the framing is right. In other words, to make sure that it is going to burn where I want it to. And then we will just press frame. Now it will show me the area here that it's going to be engraving. And that looks good to me. Now, truth be told, I actually used my plywood backer board here to square my tile on here. So I know that my laser is square to my board and now I know my tile is square to my laser. Um, I haven't got the chance to do my grid on the plywood as of yet. So anyway, we're going to engrave this tile. Um, I haven't done a tile before, so this is a bit of an experiment for me, but I'm going to run this at 100 millimeters per second and at 65% power on the 20 watt laser. So let's give it a try and see what happens. And that would be the image engraved. Now, I'm not quite sure how it came out. I mean, it looks good, but until you clear off the paint, you're not really 100% sure. So let's get the paint cleaned off with some mineral spirits or paint thinner, and we'll see what kind of an image we're left with on the tile. Now, if you wanted to make cleaning the paint off the tile a little easier, you could always use some fine steel wool and some paint thinner, and that will take it off uh, rather quickly. So there we go. The tile is paint free, it looks like. And we can see the image. There you go. And now, what we need to work on next is the base for our trivet. Well, for the base of our trivet, we need some scrap stock. And in this case, I have a piece of three quarter inch thick cherry, and I'm going to rip it into seven eighths of an inch wide strips. Now, all of our strips of cherry need to have a rabbit cut in them, but we need to know how deep to cut that rabbit. So in order for this trivet to be um, effective, we need the tile to be raised up above the wood. So we need to know the thickness of our tile. And in this case, it's roughly 15 fourths. So we need a rabbit that is going to be uh, more shallow than that. So I think we're going to make our rabbit 3 sixteenths of an inch deep. So we will cut a rabbit in one edge of each of our strips. 
that is going to be 3 16 of an inch deep and I'm thinking half an inch wide. Now I know that my blade is not the sharpest thing that it could be, but <laughs> cherry is one of the worst woods for burning when you're cutting it. That's okay, we can sand that off later. And this, these burn marks underneath here, they're gonna be covered up by the tile. It's just these top ones. So how did those top ones get there? Well, I'll tell you. After I cut the rabbit, I test it with my tile to see how it fit, and it didn't quite protrude over the top of the wood as much as what I wanted it to. So I had to run it through the table saw and just take a little trim off the top surface here to get it to recess just below the ceramic tile. So now that we have that done, we're going to take this back over to the table saw. We're going to use our miter fence and I'm going to 45 a frame that will perfectly house this tile. So with the frame dry fit together, we can just test to make sure that our tile does in fact fit and is just slightly raised above the cherry. And it is, I'm fine with that. Um, and you can see that those burns on the inside will not be visible. We're gonna deal with these afterwards. Right now though, what we need to do is get this frame glued together. So we will apply glue on all four corners, clamp it up, and set it aside, let it completely set up. And guys, don't forget to clean up your squeeze out. And with our frame dry, we can now sand it. And you don't need anything fancy for this, just a piece of sandpaper glued onto some 3 quarter inch MDF will suit you just fine. And with the frame sanded all the way around, it's up to you what you want to do with these crisp edges. Uh, I like to break them just because this is going to be handled a lot. So you don't want those sharp edges. They can cut you. So you can do a round over here at the router table on both sides if you want. But for me, I'm just going to use some 220 grit sandpaper. I'm going to break all of these corner edges here, soften it up a little bit, and then well, then we need to mount our tile in here. And you can just mount your tile there and there would be your trivet. Doesn't that look great? Okay, so you've got some options here at this point. Um, you can leave this tile free floating to make it easier to clean and take it out if you like, or you can mount it directly in here permanently. And for that, you can use an adhesive, something like an E6000, which is an all-purpose type of gel adhesive. You can even take a thin bead of clear silicone around the outside edge of your wooden frame, just around the inside here, and then carefully set your tile into it and let it cure, and that will hold it quite well. Um, as well, for me, this cherry is going to get some varnish on it, some satin finish varnish. But for me, I will be using the HVLP sprayer. I don't do the setup for every little project. So things like this that need finishing, I do them in batches. So when I get three or four projects lined up that are ready to accept a finish, I will set up my spray booth and uh, I will go to town with finishing all of my pieces. 
But there you go, guys, uh, with a little bit of effort, a laser engraver and a piece of tile and a little bit of scrap. It's a great little item. It's a fantastic little trivet. And I don't know anyone, I think, who's a Star Wars fan in this case uh, would be happy to receive something like this. And there you have it. A ceramic tile trivet. Guys, this project was a load of fun and dead simple. I mean, if you can make a picture frame, you can make one of these trivets. And I don't want you to get too hung up on the laser engraving thing, that stormtrooper picture or whatever it was I put on the front. You don't need that at all. And the only reason I did it is because I have a laser engraver. It's kind of a new toy to me and I'm enjoying experimenting and playing with it. But it doesn't mean that you cannot make this project. There's all kinds of things that you can do to that tile if you did want to decorate it. You could paint it, you could use ad adhesive vinyl, or you could just leave it plain and let the color of the tile be just a clean design and speak for itself. Heck, you could even switch it up and instead of doing something with the tile, you could do a wood-burned border around the wooden base. Now, some of you might be thinking, why bother with the wooden base? Well, it's simple. That ceramic tile will transfer heat. So what's the point of having a trivet where your ceramic tile takes the heat of your pot or what have you, but then transfer it, transfers it down to your table? It's kind of pointless. So the wood will help disperse that. Now, if you don't want to glue your tile in, you don't have to, that's up to you. I mean, it will help to keep it from ever getting broken, but not gluing it in might make it a little easier for cleanup should you have a spill. It's up to you. Again, I encourage you to modify this project in any way that you see fit to make it your own. But honestly, guys, for the cost of one tile and the little bit of scrap wood that we used for this, it would make a wonderful gift. And you know what? I hate to say it, but Christmas is just around the corner. So why not look at this as, hey, you know what, make a couple and give them away as Christmas gifts in the coming weeks because it's a quick one, it's a great way to use up scrap, and honestly, it looks great. Who wouldn't love to have one of these? Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed today's content, guys. I hope that you're, you, you're considering trying this for yourself because it is a load of fun with or without the laser engraving. It's still a load of fun. And more importantly, I hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.